Everyone has an idea of what science is and what scientists look like. Highly educated, highly trained, very serious geniuses. Which is why it might surprise you that some of today's most cutting edge research looks like this. And it's being done by people just like you, through what is known as citizen science. From finding water on Mars to creating self-driving cars, today's scientists are accomplishing incredible feats. It will be one of the fastest scientific achievements in modern history. However, there is one big problem. After research and sampling, oftentimes there is too much data. For example, just to choose one ongoing study, the Cancer Genome Atlas program, which is aiming to map 33 different types of cancer, has amassed 2.5 petabytes of data. Just for context, one petabyte is 1 million gigabytes. Facebook's warehouse stores 10 billion user photos, and that's only 1.8 petabytes of data. So the 2.5 petabytes of data from the Cancer Genome Atlas program is a big problem, and it's not a unique one. The problem is that there aren't enough scientists in the world. Um, there are just, you know, too much data, too, too few scientists. And things are getting worse faster than they're getting better. The number of scientists on Earth won't increase as fast as the number of sequences that we, we're generating. Fortunately, some creative minds found a solution. Scientists sought the help of a rapidly growing community, gamers. Hail the new kings, Samsung Galaxy! There was a lot of interesting thing that we learned during this project. What are the specialties, you know, when it comes to integrating citizen science with games? Using a strategy called gamification, game developers and researchers are able to integrate complicated projects into exciting and addicting mainstream games, like mapping exoplanets and unfolding proteins, often without gamers even realizing it's there, while others have formed communities dedicated to making a small but meaningful contribution to science. One incentive that is really important is actual love for science. <laughs> By utilizing their immense user bases, scientists are accomplishing tasks that would normally take hundreds of years to complete. By turning everyday gamers into scientists, the work can be spread out between hundreds of thousands of people. This all began before Fortnite, before Nintendo, and before, uh, Pong. It all started in the late 1800s. Led by the legendary ornithologist Wells Cook, amateur birders from all over the Mississippi River Basin reported detailed observations on the arrival of migratory birds throughout the winter. Using a collaborative approach, Cook was able to collect a dataset of unprecedented scope and accuracy from an area larger than any individual or group of scientists could cover alone. Cook's legacy lives on through the National Audubon Society's annual Christmas bird count, where roughly 72,000 participants have recorded tens of millions of birds. Migration numbers have even been recently proven to predict hurricane seasons better than any other tool before it. Today though, those numbers are dwarfed by the vast international communities of citizen scientists now participating throughout the internet, who happen to be skilled at some things computers can't do. You know, as humans, we're really good at pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that is because in the jungle we had to see the, you know, we had to see the predator very quickly. So we're we're really good we're really good at pattern recognition. That that's these very basic uh, cognitive skills are what you're using in citizen science usually. And uh, what we need all the time is having a scientist or human uh, looking at it and uh, correcting the small mistakes. So if we want to, uh, to scale the science uh, at a level where it would be possible to, to, to analyze manually and have more accurate uh, alignment program, we need to involve more people in the process. And how do we do it? Well, we decided to do it with a game because as I was mentioning earlier, um, games uh, are accessible to if they are well done to anyone, people can get entertained and at the same time they can solve uh, uh, important problems. 
One of the earliest games that took advantage of this is Fold It. Yeah, so Fold It is a sort of a multiplayer online puzzle game. Here's Seth Cooper, the lead designer at Fold It and a gamification expert. The players are competing and collaborating to try to find well-folded protein structures. Okay, so I have Folded on my computer here and we're just gonna poke around and see what the gameplay is actually like. So when you make a move like this, you're actually folding the protein and the way that a protein is folded defines its form and a protein's form defines its function. So the more players that play fold it and the more users that experiment and mess around with different ways to fold a protein, the higher likelihood you have of finding a groundbreaking discovery in the gameplay, which you can apply to real life. Kind of the idea with fold it was uh, to involve sort of the game players, the human kind of spatial reasoning, creativity, problem solving, um, community and that kind of thing to try to put all of that uh, brain power, right? The brain power that people spend playing video games um, and try to sort of put that towards solving some kind of problem in the real world. And while it does take time, everyone who plays Folded is making the process go a bit faster. One premier contributor is Patrick. How did you get into Folded? I first started playing Folded all the way back in high school when I was kind of you know, I was, I was into video gaming back then, always have been, and this was the first time that I had heard that uh, a video game was, was doing like some real cool stuff. And I think the sort of biggest thing about it is not only does it help, um, does, does it help real science, but uh, I was just engaging with it from, from a gameplay perspective as well. Just, you know, with other video games, there's what's called a meta game, where it's like you kind of generally know like the best strategies like over time, right? Like the player base learns it. And when Folded, it, the, the metagame is literally the science. It is literally protein science. Fold it is more than just research. Players enjoy the challenge of the game similarly to a Rubik's Cube or other three-dimensional puzzles and have a lot of fun doing it. Even if you're not generating any data that is like the ultimate like solution or the ultimate result, science is all about knowing what doesn't work as well. And so that's still data that scientists can use to say, okay, well, this part of the protein worked, this part didn't. What if we took this and they used it as a scaffold for something better? And that process of reiteration um, helps even even with like, uh, you know, the people on the lower uh, echelons of the leaderboards too. What Patrick isn't mentioning here is that some players have been published in academic journals because of their discoveries while playing Folded. Who is this game for? A lot of the people who are playing the game are interested in contributing to science and in particular interested in biochemistry. For the most part in a lot of these games, the players are also very interested in the fact that it is sort of a real sort of citizen science contribution. But therein lies the problem. Most Foldit players are really into the science, which is great for quality research and development, but when it comes to huge data sets, the more players, the merrier. There's a lot of students that play this game and then just subsequently never play it again because uh, there's it's just uh, not engaging enough or they don't fully uh, like understand or appreciate what they're doing enough to get gratification from. This comes back to the basic idea behind citizen science. By involving everyday people into the research, more research can get done. So the more people you engage, the better for science. But keeping people around can be difficult. Um, and this is something that, that citizen science projects around the world were suffering with. They had a lot of people coming in, a lot of initial interest, but then the long tail wasn't really there, so people basically just fell off the train. They tried it once or twice, and then never returned. This is Berger, who is working on this exact problem, as well as aiming to answer some of the greatest mysteries in the universe. EVE Online is the biggest single shard, free-to-play MMO of all time. MMOs, or Massively Multiplayer Online Games, we have kind of mastered the art of retention, you know, getting people to, to come in and stay around for, for you know, sometimes a very long time. So marrying the two, um, the hope was that we could, you know, have some real impact on, on science going forward. The result? Project Discovery. 
I am Michel Mayor, professor at the University of Geneva. I discovered the first exoplanet orbiting a sun-like star in 1995. Together with other EVE players, you will now have a chance to join the search for new exoplanets through project discovery in EVE Online. EVE Online has integrated this complex data analysis task as an easy-to-use minigame, which even draws in players on its own. Of course, it kind of leans on the already existing community. We have hundreds of thousands of players that play the game every month, and to them this is, this is you know, another thing to do. It's, it's another type of content they can interact with. Most players have the, you know, we kind of designed the game in such a way that, that you know, it's, it's easy to jump into it. It's easy to do like a couple of tasks, you know, while, you know, traveling between solar systems or while mining an asteroid or, or waiting for your friends to show up so you can fleet up. So while taking a break from this, Players have been able to contribute their time to help discover new exoplanets. EVE players have actually analyzed incredible amount of data uh, for the scientists. And there are some very promising uh, signs that, that there are planets that have been located. Exoplanet discovery and research is helping us answer the questions, where are we from? And are we alone? Outer space is full of information that may lead us to answers, and EVE players are doing their part to participate. The EVE community is like super dedicated, incredibly smart people, way, way, way smarter than I am. Um, and once they get like, once they get a task that's quote unquote impossible, like they dive into it head first. And we learned that with, with uh, the first installment of Prod Discovery. Project Discovery has actually already had a successful trial of citizen science in their gameplay, where EVE players analyzed over 13 million images of cells in hopes of mapping different protein structures. Instead of folding proteins like in Fold It, EVE players were pinpointing where exactly they'd show up. It took the EVE players uh, three weeks to get through the whole dataset. And, uh, and of course, we, you know, we, we freaked out and panicked. Like what was the community's interest in tackling that research? Well, it just kind of, it resonates. Like, if you have the opportunity to help, you want to help. And you're contributing to the greater good. <laughs> in fact, the community was so efficient that scientists were able to create a machine learning program that could now do the work on its own. So now, you know, we're not spending scientists' time in like actually, you know, figuring out what is what and where the nucleus or whatever is. Um, but now just an algorithm can do it with the help of even line players. This is Attila, one of the people responsible for all of this. Uh, give, me a, give me a hands up if you're familiar with the term citizen science. Okay, not bad. <laughs> And so what were like the first steps to integrate this into these already existing large AAA games? Well, first of all, it was a really interesting process in the case of EVE. Even though it was very quick from idea to launch, we took a lot of steps to involve the player community in this decision. So we already presented this idea to, uh, to uh, at FanFest, which is the annual convention of EVE players in Reykjavik, way before we knew which scientific project we're going to introduce, how it will look like in the game. It was just a, it was just, just a concept. But we wanted to see how EVE players react to it, how the community react to it. The players welcomed the idea with open arms. And because of this excitement, citizen science moved further into the mainstream. One of the most recent and largest video games to integrate citizen science is Borderlands, another project that Attila helped bring to life. Like many popular games today, Borderlands is what's called a first-person looter-shooter game, which holds a certain kind of energy, but also makes it less likely to have science built into the gameplay. Even more unlikely is the type of research they ended up integrating. So we thought it would be a 
fun to see about starting a project where you know virtually anybody could could participate. Here is um, Daniel McDonald, the scientific director of the American Gut Project, the team that's research is integrated in Borderlands. To open up the door for people to learn a little bit more about the microbes that live on and inside of them. They sought to study our microbiome. Did you know that more than half the cells in our bodies are alien? Only 43% of our cells are of human origin. So the team set out to gather samples of, well... To use the scientific term, doo-doo. Uh, and so we were able to set up uh, a, a project where um, people could contribute uh, their own money. Uh, and in exchange, um, we'd send them a sample and then... Uh, they could collect the sample, send it back to us, and we'd do the molecular work and tell them a little bit about uh, what we observed and how they relate to others in the population. The team was able to obtain hundreds of thousands of samples with the incentive that people could learn about their own microbiome, but also... You'll be directly helping our scientists organize and compare this dung data. This project was called the Microseta Initiative. So when the eager team at the American Gut Project got in touch with the people who could analyze this data, we got Borderlands science. But the science still had to be put into the game. We know that Borderlands is a completely different game. It's a super fast game. The audience is much diverse and they're not, even for me, it was really hard to imagine where exactly this will appear in the game. So it was quite a, a magic period when we saw how the actual implementation came out from designers and developers. and and how they managed to integrate it perfectly with the Borderlands universe. If you take a look at Borderlands, it's a completely ludicrous game. That's about the worst fit you could have for science stuff, but it worked and it worked really well. As ludicrous as it may be, Gabriel and the other developers found the perfect way to integrate the science game into the Borderlands world. We were lucky because the raw material that scientists bring is basically pure data. So you can visualize it as you want, and it gives you a lot of artistic freedom. Borderlands 3, this game has been so fun so far. It's kind of like Overwatch meets Fortnite. It's a looter shooter game with a lot of energy. I'm finally on the Sanctuary 3 ship where Borderlands science is. You can see we're coming up on this arcade looking game. So it kind of looks like Tetris in a way and on the right side of the screen you can see that there are these yellow bricks that are the amount of moves we can use to try to get the best fitting pattern on the screen here. The crazy part about this is that every time I move one of these tiles, I'm manipulating data that was collected from the poop samples that were sent in. Scientists are able to look at this, compare and contrast certain elements that make up people's guts. Great job! That's what we call a meat train! Like, I would honestly play this game in a loading screen over not playing a game in a loading screen any time. We have millions of sequences, and so the multiple part is actually doing all of these together at once. There has been prior work that's shown that humans um, uh, with, uh, with our ability to do a really good job of pattern matching, it's one of the things our brains are really good at, um, uh, humans can excel at doing some of these small alignment steps. Um, and then the citizen science comes into play because these problems can be broken down into small little things. We can have a huge number of people working on small little problems that chip away at this alignment issue, and then we can recompile all those results on the other end. And on the other end, you have results, like the DNA makeup of all microbes in our biome. And because it's open source, the sky's the limit on the breakthroughs that will ultimately result. And that's just for Borderlands 3, one video game in a sea of games. In fact, it's estimated that over 40% of the world's population plays video games on some level. That's 3.1 billion people that would have to change nothing about their daily lives to change the world. So long as these citizen science pioneers sneak themselves further into the video game world. So what we want to know, what video game would you want to see citizen science incorporated into? 